Good morning, and welcome to worship from the sanctuary of First Presbyterian Church here in Easton, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Stephanie Munsell, and I welcome um, our, our ongoing worshipers and anyone who might join us for the first time this Sunday. Um, a few announcements. Thank you to everyone who has uh, shared uh, gifts for our um, our ARC luncheon uh, uh, um, lunch bags. We will be participating in that mission project with our neighbors at Trinity Church um, the first weekend of August. And thanks to all who gave. If you are still looking for a way to help, please be in touch with Nancy Udit um, to see what other additional supplies we might need. Um, other announcements, uh, I really don't have too many for this Sunday, so I just will remind folks that next Sunday we do celebrate communion, and you are invited to bring your own elements to your worship space, and then we will share communion um, via the gift of technology and the power of the Holy Spirit. So welcome to worship today. Let us prepare to worship God as we begin with our opening prayer. Let us worship God together. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It is a small seed, but has some surprises in store for us. God's transforming love begins and enters our hearts through small ways. Lord, plant amazing seeds of love in us that they may grow in ways which glorify you. Amen. Amen. Let us sing this morning's hymn of praise, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
This morning's scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33. The word of the Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The word of the Lord. Unexpected, a mustard seed, and yeast. Friends, over the past few weeks, we have heard Jesus use illustrations from the everyday life of his listeners to help teach, teach those who came to learn from him to understand more about God and God's kingdom. Today, today's reading has Jesus teaching using the example again of a seed, this time a mustard seed. He also uses the example of yeast or leaven, which is used in baking of bread. Now, in Jesus' day, it was common for people to reference a mustard seed in order to suggest that something was very, very small. Jesus' first listeners would have known a mustard seed. Mustard plants were quite common in the Near East. Mustard plants, now they don't grow into what we normally think of as trees, with trunks and bark and big soaring branches. No, the mustard plant certainly began with a tiny, tiny seed, and it could produce a big woody plant. That mustard plant behaved like a weed. Once it was established, it spread quickly. It intertwined with the landscape around it. Those tiny seeds were means by which it spread profusely. The seed to plant proportion what was was remarkable. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have a mustard plant in my yard. But I certainly have encountered weeds. Weeds like vines that once established, once a little plant pops up, the next thing I know, it's everywhere. A teensy tiny seed that grows into a plant that winds its way everywhere. This is what Jesus said was like the kingdom of God. Small origins, surprisingly big impact. What about yeast? Now, I'm not sure your average baker to whom Jesus spoke would have known the science behind yeast when she made her bread. But those who listened to Jesus would know firsthand What happened to bread without yeast, without the leaven to make it rise? Yeasts are single-celled organisms that feed off of simple sugars, breaking them down into carbon dioxide, ethanol, flavor molecules, and energy, a process we know as fermentation. You learned a little science here today. In baking bread, the yeast organisms, when they expel that carbon dioxide as they feed off the sugars, when that dough begins to warm and bakes, 
It permeates the bread and leaves behind these bubbles, these nooks that causes the bread to rise. CO2 crannies that stays when it sets. Maybe you are one of the many people who took up baking during quarantine. Apparently, making sourdough was quite a popular hobby. Did any of you do that? Nobody here did. Doesn't look like. Oh, you did? Oh, Elizabeth did. Apparently, it was so popular that there was a time when yeast became scarce for a while. Now, I'm not a baker myself, but I am a bread lover. So I can appreciate the power of the little powder of yeast. It's the difference between a cracker and a delicious loaf. Even we modern listeners can appreciate the example used in Jesus' parables. Two examples of small components, a seed, one ingredient, both grow and spread and have a significant effect on the environment around them. We know all too well these days an example of something small having a huge impact, a huge effect. A tiny virus has crept into our lives and turned into every corner of our, of our days and turned everything on its head. Small but significant, surprisingly so. But what Jesus shares is how in the kingdom of God, something small can bring such good. Today, I want to remind you that when Jesus shared this parable about the mustard seed and the yeast, the parables meant to tell us about God's kingdom. Now, God's people had been waiting for God's reign to come on earth. But God's people had been misunderstanding what that kingdom on earth might look like. God's kingdom. Will an army of angels come to overthrow earthly powers and oust all evil from creation? Is that what the kingdom coming would look like? Would God hurl lightning bolts from heaven down on the earth to assert justice on earth? Would God send a Messiah, a champion, to be king over all the earth? When they waited, when the people waited, they waited for something big. The revelation of this parable is the assertion that something so small and unexpected would usher in God's rule, the rule that would establish God's redeeming power on earth. So let's step back from this parable for a moment. What do we know from the word of God about God's kingdom? We know that God came to earth to establish the kingdom. And God came how? In the form of a tiny little baby. Small and surprising. And that baby grew to be a man. A warrior? A king? No. God with us was a rabbi, a teacher, a healer. He denounced the use of the sword when confronted by the powers of the religious and the state authorities. He didn't brashly proclaim himself king of heaven and earth. No, when we call Jesus our Lord and Savior, we acknowledge the prince of God's kingdom is nothing like earthly kings. Jesus is the seed, the leaven of the kingdom of God. Taking root at the beginning of time, foreseen by the prophets, this humble man, what kind of force did Jesus assemble? A dozen mostly fishermen. 
and a band of other hangers-on, a motley crew of tax collectors and women and sinners. Nothing like the force that those who were waiting for the Messiah expected. It was through faith and sacrificial love exhibited by Jesus that the kingdom was inaugurated. The seed was planted in the earth. Jesus was laid in a tomb and life spread forth from that tiny seed, from that gift of love. Through one human life, all humankind was offered eternal life. Small, strange, surprising. And so too was the spread of the kingdom. It was that assorted band of disciples, those humble followers who worked to spread the good news about the risen, the rising Christ. God's reign was established in Jesus, but the roots took hold in the hearts of people like you and I, who put our trust in the power of a surprising and small but significant savior. Doubtful disciples, imperfect followers, we are part of God's kingdom. In such surprising and strange ways, the kingdom of God is and was and will be. It's around us. It has woven into every nook and cranny of our existence. So why does that matter? Why do we need to take this morning to pause and think about the small and surprising ways that God's kingdom is in us and around us? Why do we need to reflect that Christ is the seed and the leaven, the life-giving, rising power of God? We teach about the kingdom today for the same reason that Jesus did so long ago. God's kingdom is still unfolding in small and sometimes unexpected ways. And if we're not looking, if we're not open to that surprising way, we could miss it. We could miss God and the power of Christ all around us. The kingdom of God is the restoring and redeeming love of God coming to full force on earth as it is in heaven. And we are invited by by Jesus to let the seeds of the kingdom into our own lives, to let the tiny seed of faith burrow in and start to spread in every aspect of our living to let that spoonful of life into the chemistry of our world so that grace will bubble and bring life and love. But if we're distracted, if we're shut down by stress and the strain of illness, anger, addiction, aging, or even sin itself, if we are hard-hearted, and need to grasp on to control because of our fear, if we close our eyes, we miss all that God is doing here and now. We miss the kingdom. God's will is being done. God's redemptive power is being offered. God's blessings are blossoming and offering us shelter during hard and difficult times. God's grace is lifting up the tired and deflated. But seeing and accepting this redeeming, saving grace is sometimes hard. So I have a funny little story to share with you. Maybe you've heard it before. It tells about a man who lived in a house next to a river. One spring, a storm came. 
and the river began to overflow its banks. Now, the man was a devoted Christian, and he wanted to show the world and to show God the strength of his faith. So when the waters began to rise, his family called him and said, you have to evacuate, get out of there. And he said, no, I will pray and ask God to save me. You just wait and see. So he sat on his porch and he prayed. Soon the waters rose even higher and he was forced to climb up to his second floor. And as he prayed for God to save him, the local fire department came by in a rescue boat. And they called to him and they offered to bring him to higher ground. And he told them no. He was going to stay put and keep praying and God would rescue him. Finally, the waters rose so high that the man had to climb to his very roof to escape the rising waters. And as he sat on his roof and he watched the waters rush by, a helicopter flew by. And a voice from a loudspeaker shouted down to him, we'll, sh we'll throw you down a ladder, climb on, and we'll bring you to safety. And the man said, no, I'll continue to pray to God, and God will save me. Soon, yes, friends, in this story, the water swept the house away, and the man perished in the waters. And when he stood before God and was greeted with open and loving arms, the man asked God, why? Why didn't you save me from the waters? And God said, well, I sent you a telephone call and a boat and a helicopter, and you didn't accept my help. Now, this is just a made-up story, but the point is that God is active in our lives, offering us a lifeline, offering the world grace and blessings and salvation, but we need to have eyes to see. Sometimes it'll be small and unexpected, but leave it to us humans to even miss the big in clear invitations. The kingdom of God is present here and now. It's unfolding around us. It was and is and will be. And we are called to be part of God's active, redemptive transformation of our own hearts and souls and minds and of this world. What might feel like small and surprising signs we know can be hugely significant. The call of a friend when your spirits are low. The gift of a stranger when the way forward seems bleak. A word chosen carefully to show kindness. The dedication of a stranger when your needs are profound the courage which can swell in us when we know that we can be no longer silent, small but significant. God's power is all around us. Find hope and courage and faith as you look for the will and the ways of our Lord and Savior, working in you and unfolding all around us. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to join your hearts with mine as we come before God in prayer. Almighty God of surprising and significant grace, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. We especially thank you for the mission and ministry of this church, for every service that proclaims your love, for the people and relationships that sustain us, and our calling to daily discipleship in your kingdom, for all signs of new life and hope. Merciful God of small and surprising grace, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, our living Lord. Especially we pray for the church of Jesus Christ in every land, for people of faith, who seek to live out your grace and goodness, for the stewardship and healing of all creation. We pray for friends and family members. We pray for neighbors in special need. We pray for the wisdom of your spirit for this day. And we pray that you would give us eyes to seek and to see your kingdom. O oh, eternal God, you are our beginning and our end, our starting point and our haven. You accompany us, each of us, on our day's journey. Use our hands to do the work of your kingdom Use our lives to bring others to new life, the new life that you give. We pray this all in Jesus Christ, Redeemer of all, surprising and oh so significant, our Savior. With the confidence of God's children, let us pray the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Siblings in Christ, I thank you for coming to worship on this day, and I charge you to open your eyes and your hearts to the sometimes small but always significant ways that God is in the work in the world. You are invited to join in the work of God's kingdom. 
Be prepared to say yes. Amen.